Connecticut Andrea Johnson has completed her first day on the job as the new National Prosecuting Authority's Investigative Directorate Head. She takes over from Hermion Grunier after President Cyril Ramaphosa announced her appointment last night. Uh, Johnson's been with the NPA for more than 25 years and was involved in the prosecution of the late former police national commissioner Jackie Stilevi and Paralympian Oscar Pistorius. Grenier asked to prematurely step down from that post last December. She was the first person to lead the investigating directorate, which was established by Ramaphosa in 2019 as an instrument in the fight against corruption. Well, speaking of corruption, Alderman's 2022 trust barometer has found that most South Africans distrust information from government and the media due to diminishing faith in both institutions. The cycle of distrust report shows a worrying trend towards a fearful and disillusioned society. Well, for more on the story, uh, we're joined by future elector program director, Dr. Stembile Mbate and Edelman, a South Africa managing director, Karina Krira. Uh, good evening to both of you and thanks for your time. Uh, Karina, it's very easy when one looks at particularly the findings of uh, research like this and we'll get into what some of those findings are soon. It's easy to discredit the research. So I think first let's talk about the methodology that uh, was applied by your organization and how credible the findings are. Thanks so much, Kathy, and thanks very much for having me on the show. Um, so Edelman has been studying trust for 22 years. Um, so we've been adopting the same methodology for that time. Over the years, we've obviously increased our survey to include many different countries as we've increased our footprint uh, around the world. Um, but we use an online survey. It's typically conducted in the November prior to the year in which we present it. So in this case, the research would have been conducted, the field work would have been conducted in November of 2021. Um, and it's conducted across 28 countries uh, with over 1,150 participants um, of all income groups. Dr. Mbete, why is trust so important for any society? Thanks for having me, Kathy. Trust is really the foundation on which we live together uh, as a society. The um, ability to trust in your neighbors, in, 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 in your family, in the people that you live with, in the people that you work with, and in the people that govern you. Uh, is foundational to your sense of security, but also to the ability of a society to take risks, to develop. And so low trust societies are often ones that find it very difficult to cooperate uh, in ways that um, enable uh, development, both economically and otherwise. Uh, but certainly democracies as well are very reliant on trust in order to function. Uh, and so it is difficult to maintain um, the kind of trust, uh, the, to maintain democratic institutions, uh, to maintain healthy uh, political parties and political institutions if you don't have a foundation of societal trust. Uh, Karina, when it comes to the actual findings of this research, it's not looking good for government and the media. Run us through uh, some of your findings briefly on those two sectors. So unfortunately, Kathy, for those two institutions, and, and I must just stress that our, our trust research looks at all four institutions uh, related to each other. So that being business, NGOs, government and media. Um, although government uh, has actually started in the single figures levels of trust uh, a few years back, probably about five years back, we now see them in, in, in double digits, which is a potentially a positive move, but still very much in levels of distrust. Um, so we see there that government only sitting at 26% levels of trust, um, and 50% would actually be a neutral scoring of trust for us. So that gives you a sense of where they're, where they're factoring, and unfortunately, year on year, a decline. We did see improvements in levels of trust at the beginning of the pandemic, um, but unfortunately, it seemed to be a trust bubble uh, that exploded pretty soon um, after we saw those levels. And I think that was largely in response to, to our pandemic and the, the swift lockdowns that we saw in South Africa, where, where people responded very positively. Likewise with the media, unfortunately, sitting in levels of distrust. And again, we're seeing a negative worrying trend um, uh, it, it for that in that direction for the media. Um, and as I said, that's, that's in, con, um, 
in opposition to what we're seeing for NGOs and, and business, who are by far the most trusted institutions together in this market, both sitting at 63% of trust, which we see as firmly in the trusted category. Mm. Dr. Mbeta, when you look at the way in which business and NGOs have been trusted over the past year versus uh, that of government and the media, do you think that the experience under the pandemic has contributed to this? And, and most importantly, you know, what are the lessons that we, we should be drawing from research of this nature? I certainly think that uh, the experience as the pandemic went on uh, has certainly contributed to this and in two ways. The first uh, is that what has eroded trust in the government during the pandemic uh, has been the revelations that we've had of the PPE corruption on the part of government where in the middle of a health crisis. Uh, where one expected government to really put all resources into addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. What we found is that the kinds of ills of corruption, uh, of misuse of state resources were still there. And I think that's eroded a great deal of the trust uh, in, in government that had been built up in 2020. And then the amount of disinformation that we've seen um, through uh, social media, but also in traditional media uh, around the COVID-19 pandemic, but also the politicization uh, of media reporting on a whole number of issues um, in the country. And I think that what this uh, barometer has reflected is, and, and what the findings on government and the media both reflect, is people's distrust in politics. Uh, even one of the findings found that um, people would like CEOs to be more involved in some policy issues, but they want a business to stay out of politics. And I think people have lost faith in the ability of politics and political processes to actually bring about positive change in their lives and in society in general. Uh, and so the more an institution or a person is associated with politics or is seen as being politicized, the less people trust it. Mm. And I think that that is something for both uh, government and the media to be very concerned about. And then finally, um, what we've seen is that people have experienced both business and I think particularly NGOs as actually delivering uh, on mandates that government should be delivering on. So if you consider the gift of the givers, for example, uh, which has provided water and sanitation in areas that have been failed by their municipalities, a big reason why people don't trust uh, government is that uh, the civil service uh, is actually failing to deliver the services that it should be, uh, and people are looking to, to other actors to provide um, those kinds of services to make their lives better. Mm. Uh, Karina, let me wrap up with you then. Uh, Dr. Mbeta talks about the findings where business is concerned. And, and I suppose it's not just about the fact that business is the most trusted, but we're seeing here that people, in fact, want business to do more. They believe that business is not doing enough. That's absolutely right, Kathy. Um, I, I think people acknowledge the role that business needs to play. And I think when we find that we have disproportionate levels of trust across those four institutions, when you find that one institution might be failing you, you automatically lean towards another. So uh, unilaterally, people felt that business need to engage more. Um, that was feedback across the board. And we specifically asked the question around whether, we, whether people felt that business should just stay in their lane. Um, and and, and the, it was unanimously agreed that business needs to engage more. So really, the business societal role is here to stay. And we're seeing that some of the major fears in society um, are what people are expecting business to actually step up and, and, and deal with. And people are looking for that tangible progress. Um, their faith, certainly for now, um, looking towards business to be able to demonstrate that to them, to certainly calm those levels of anxiety mm. and calm the levels of fear, which are, are at staggering heights this mm. year. And, 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 and it's not surprising to see fear at, at, an, uh, at the height that we're seeing simply because what, what happened coming out of the pandemic. So, so Karina, in as far as just some of the markers here, um, I, I want us to talk about what some of those are when it came to people expressing their fears over their futures. Uh, Dr. Mbete, I know you're on Mbete, rather. I know you're on the run. So we'll let you go uh, here. Program Director of Future Elect, Dr. Mm -hmm. Stembile Mbete, Managing Director of Edelman South Africa, Karina Krira, will be